skills. Let's talk about skills. Okay, so like I said, I, the reason I'm doing this is to try and like make a point that there are more skills that are kind of viable that you can use outside of the meta ones, but because obviously the meta skills do exist, we're gonna need a category for them. So I figured the best way to do that would be to split up the categories like this. Because here's the thing, I don't think there is any skill in the game that is necessarily bad. They all have some kind of purpose. They all do something. Some skills are better than others, and I think that's going to be an undeniable fact no matter how far into this game's development we get, like post-release. There will always be better skills, there will always be skills that are stronger than others, that's just how things work. Because I don't think any of the skills are necessarily bad, that's why I've gone with these categories. So we've gone with meta unfun, which are just objectively the strongest skills in the game. We all know they're meta, I don't need to talk about them. Uh, meta fun, which are skills that are strong and meta, but maybe because they're like, they require at least like some thought to use or they're fun in some way to use that aren't just, you click a button and you instantly get the effects. <laughs> this might be a bit subjective because there, there's, there's a, there are a lot of people saying that payday free is micromanaging and unfun and I disagree. I like the micromanagement. I think it makes the game more fun. So there may be some disagreement on this. Um, skills like ammo funnel replenish are going in meta and fun. I don't care what anyone says, they are not fun skills. You literally just click on people and instantly get ammo. There is like no play around that. You just do the thing and it instantly happens and it's just cool, great, I can keep shooting now. I guess in that sense it could maybe go into fun if you just want to shoot infinitely. Like, in that sense it could be fun, but I'm gonna put it into meta and fun personally. Strong but overlooked is a category that is basically these skills should be meta or could be meta if the skills that are meta didn't exist, basically. They're skills that in a parallel universe could be meta. Uh, situationally good are just skills that are just okay, like they're, they're good skills. Like they're maybe not the, the best skills in the game, they're maybe not always applicable, but they do have uses and they are like quite strong in those specific uses. And then questionable useful it's just like one or two skills. We'll, we'll get to those when we get to them. I'm also using uh, Stitch's UI for this. I like the icons more and uh, and it also allows me to use a different icon for uh, what you call it, unyielding and uh, super physiological, which we'll get to because I have words for supra. So I'm using the Stitch UI um, icons for this because they are just generally, in my opinion, better than the base game icons. Cool, right, we've got that out of the way. Let's start then. So this is, what, I'm a specialist? Uh, I'm a specialist basic, yeah. I have been vocal about this before. Of course we're starting with this one. I'm gonna have two people that disagree with me, but I'm gonna put this in questionably useful. Maybe situationally good, because it depends on if you're using ammo bags or not. If you're using ammo bags, then yeah, the two extra charges is fine. Actually, no. No, because if you're, if you're going to use armor bags, you're going to get like other skills anyway, so you're going to take this by default. No, it's it's questionable useful. No, it's questionable useful. I said there are no skills that are objectively bad, but this might be one of the few skills that I actually maybe might need that category for. Uh, armor specialist basic just doesn't do anything. The two extra armor bag charges is fine if you want to go into armor bags, but you'll take this anyway because if you go into something like high grain or fully loaded, you're going to take the skill by default, so it doesn't matter. The reserve ammo doesn't apply to starting ammo. So for all intents and purposes, the reserve ammo capacity bonus does nothing. Like unless you just eat a shit ton of ammo from an ammo bag, you will never need that bonus. So as armor specialist ace, whenever you pick up ammo, if you're weapons record, it's full gain edge. I'm I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever actually used that skill is the thing. That also seems like a questionably useful one. The thing is there are over so many other sources of edge in Hero 3 that I don't think picking up ammo at full ammo is like ever the easiest way, it would ever be the easiest way of proccing edge. Yeah, no, that seems really questionably useful actually. Maybe situationally fine, but like, I don't know, like th there are so many other ways you can gain edge that are easier than that. Especially because, like, I guess it, I guess it depends on how you're playing as well. If you're running ammo funnel replenish, then you'll probably always be on max ammo anyway. But in that case, I don't think you would, yeah, no, you'd be taking the ammo as you shoot them, so it wouldn't do any 
Uh, yeah, you'd have to pick up ammo from the floor. Yeah, that's really questionably useful. Uh, top up, top up's good. Top up's really good with throwable builds, especially if you don't have, uh, what you call it, if you don't have the other skills to get throwables back. Like, what's it called? Scrounger? I'm gonna leave it in strong but overlooked for now, I think, because I feel like people might use it more if, what you call it, if Scrounger didn't exist. Which, speaking of Scrounger, oh god, where did is it even go? Is it fun or not? I don't know. I don't like the ten percent. It makes throwable builds more fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in meta fun for now, but that might change. Yeah, I don't like the ten percent because like a lot of the time when I'm using it, I I think oh ten percent oh that's fine, and then I go like fifty ammo drops and I don't get it once. I think it's fun. I think it is a fun skill though. It does make throwable builds more fun than otherwise. That is fully loaded, isn't it? Uh, that one is extra deployable charges. Uh, I mean. I mean, where do these even go? Like, these are just meta and fun, I think, right? Because it's just, you just, like, they're just good skills. Like, there is no, there is nothing to think about with them. It's just, cool, I have two more charges. That's it. I don't think there's anything necessarily fun about them. They're just good skills in general. It's not like it changes the way you play. Uh, play up? Is the next one right? Yeah, play up. I haven't actually used play up in months at this point. And I, I, I don't know how the new play up feels to use. I feel like it's probably more fun now because it isn't just shoot cop instant regeneration. It's Anarchist with purple armor. Yeah, if you take Hardy and play up with adaptive armor, you're just playing Anarchist at that point, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> that is basically just Anarchist at that point. If you lose a chunk, you get two seconds of a really. If you kill someone, you get your armor back. And to be fair, I like Anarchist. I, I used to think Anarchist was fun, so I, I'm gonna leave it in fun. High grain, okay, high grain, no, high grain needs to go into strong weapon locks. High grain is a really good skill, but because of all of the other sources of damage bonuses at the minute, it's just there is no reason to take it unless you want to build high grain specifically. Basically, if anyone uses an ammo bag, everyone gets a 20% damage bonus for 30 seconds. If other people also have the skill, it increases by 5%. But that isn't really relevant, it's mostly the 20% that's relevant. Especially after um, Cutting Shot's gonna get nerfed, I think this will probably have more relevance. Or well, after Cutting Shot gets nerfed, they're gonna move the AP to uh, high grain anyway. At that point it might move into meta fun? But for now, high grain is overlooked because people just have an allergic reaction to ammo bags. Or if they see an ammo bag, they instantly eat the whole thing. There is no in-between. People either hate ammo bags or they eat them the moment they see one. Magfro, this is questionably useful. This is one of the most questionably useful skills in the entire game, I'm gonna be honest. In theory, it's fine, but like, ammo isn't a problem once you learn how the game works and you, like, know how to play the game at all. If you are bad at aiming, if you have a skill issue and just lose all your ammo constantly for some reason, like I used to do, and then one day I just had an epiphany and stopped losing ammo, like, you just don't need mag- you just don't need ammo, like, you really don't. Magfro is just not a thing that really needs to exist, but whatever. But yeah, I'm always client side, so you can just pick up the ammo if somebody else picks it up. So uh, that's Demolitionist. That's Overcooked. Oh god. I don't think I- okay, for, from what I'm aware, everybody that has ever used Overcooked loves Overcooked to death, and I feel like it would be sacrilege if I didn't put it in Metathon, because I'll admit it is fun to use. It's a fun skill to use, it makes throwables generally more useful, or more, us more usable, rather. Even a uh, uh, shot grenades, like shot grenades are really good by default anyway, because they go off after like 1.5 seconds, which is so fast compared to the other grenades. With Overcooks, you just click, boom, everyone's dead. And it's just a fun skill to use. Well, I'll, I'll admit, like, I don't really use throwables, but the few times I have used Overcooks, it's like, oh yeah, no, this is really fun, just everything explodes, that's really, really cool. Uh, tact oh, Tactician. Oh, now we're in my hometown. Yeah, no, this is strong but overlooked. Easily. Easily, easily strong but overlooked. People are sleeping on fucking Tactician. P people sleep on it so hard. This is, this is one of my favourite skills. Uh, tactician is whenever you blind, stagger, uh, or but it's basically just whenever you stun an enemy, you gain edge. Although the thing is, I think most people generally don't understand Tactician, which is why I'm gonna put it in Strong but Overlooked for now. I feel like it should be meta. This is a skill that really should be meta, but it just isn't. In my opinion, it is meta. But if you were to ask any, like, the general player base, they would have no fucking clue what this skill does. Tactician is really good for one reason, which is when you shoot someone, they stagger and you gain edge. Like, this can be your only edge skill and you will just get edge. But the thing that makes it so much better than that is that with certain weapons, like the bison, if you headshot someone- so with the bison, hold on, let me just quickly open up this real quick. Uh, with the bison, it normally takes 
as you can see, two headshots to kill a SWAT or heavy SWAT. But if you have edge, it's one shot. If you headshot a SWAT with the bison and it trigger and you don't have edge, it should take two shots to kill them. But if they stagger when you shoot them, you will gain edge and it will apply the edge damage bonus to the shot that hit them. So instead of taking two shots, they die in one. It's basically like crits from Payday 2. <laughs> it's basically what it is. You just randomly deal more damage sometimes. It's kind of cool and fun. I like it a lot. Like, it's a really fun way of getting edge. The thing is, though, it depends on the weapon you're using. Because certain weapons like the AK seem to have a really low stagger chance. Whereas other weapons like the Bison have a really high stagger chance and you will more often than not stagger someone when you shoot them and they'll just instantly die. With the AK especially, it seems really uncommon. I think the automatic weapons just have lower stagger chances from what I can tell, but also if you have an automatic weapon, just hold left click. It's definitely a really good skill, but yeah. Tactician, is flashbang, smoke grenade, shot grenade area is increased by 20. I want to put that on a situation there, I think, because on smokes, it's so unnoticeable that it doesn't really do anything. On flashbangs, you get like an extra 1.6 meters, but the base range of flashbangs is 8 meters in radius already, so it's like 16 meters total which is insane. You don't really need the extra like range on flashbangs in my opinion, but some grenades, I think it does have more of an effect, especially with uh, Demolitionist, because Demolitionist also increases the range of the stun grenades, uh, shot grenades, whatever they're called. So that's maybe the only time I would consider Tacticianist, personally. I don't know. Like it sounds good in theory, but it just doesn't really do much. Scramble? Scramble. Blind and stun effect is 20% longer. Like flashbangs already last a long time as is, and shot grenades last such a short amount of time that the bonus doesn't really do anything. I guess in that situation, it is situationally useful then. Like depending on what you're doing, it can be useful, but it's not necessarily super useful in general. Yeah, crowd control. Yeah, no, this is... <laughs> I don't even need to think about it. Yeah, no. I don't think anybody has ever in the history of the game used that skill to do anything. If you can flash a sieve to force them to get down, you can shout at them. I don't know. Like, you can just shout. It's free. It doesn't cost a throwable. Like, why would you want a skill to do the same thing? I don't know. It seems... Okay, well, it's twice it's it's twice as long as if you shout with them down, okay? It's twice as long as if you shout with them down. You can just shout with them again. I don't know, it seems kind of weird. My only assumption for why this skill exists is they wanted some kind of throwable skill and they were just like, hey, what if we did something that made Sims stop? <laughs> and they didn't think about what that actually meant. I don't know, it seems kind of strange. Coup de gras. Uh, coup de gras. I feel like it depends on the weapon you're using more than anything. Yeah, 10% with some weapons, with some builds is probably quite good. Especially if you have heavy, heavy, uh, heavy hit fire as well. Just shoot them once and then you just get 10% damage on every subsequent shot. That's insane. Oh, that's situationally good. Yeah. There are so many other ways to get 10% extra damage that are easier. Yeah, it's like face to face, but you don't need to be within five meters, but you need to stun them. So you get the damage bonus after your first shot, but if you have a weapon that needs the damage bonus to kill in one shot, you can't get that damage bonus. It's gonna take two shots anyway. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Exposure needs to go into strong but overlooked because Jesus Christ, yeah. Expose. Hold on, I'll throw Expose in there now actually. Because Expose was good! It wasn't, like, I would have called this better before they fucking buffed Cutting Shot, but now there's just no reason to take it. Uh, Expose is when you flash someone, they lose their armor. Why would you take it when you can just take Cutting Shot and kill everyone in one shot anyway? It doesn't work on Dozen, because Dozen's can't be flashbanged. It only works on enemies that you can flashbang. It should, it should be meta. It really should. <laughs> Discombobulate. Uh, Discombobulate. You can just kill them most of the time before. Yeah, no, I, I'm gonna situation leave for that one as well. Discombobulate is something where I've always been like, oh wow, 40%, that's cool. And then most of the time you flash them and it's just, they're, they're dead. <laughs> they're dead before, it, before the flash expires. So it's like, oh, okay. Manipulate, uh, yeah. Ooh, I, here's the thing. I, I, I wanna say this is like not that good, but honestly the speed increase is huge. If you want to like do trading, you can tie up so many more sibs. Like, before you run out of time. I, I, that feels wrong, calling Manipulate a basic meta skill, but no, it, it really does feel like a meta skill now that I think about it. That feels wrong, but it feels right. I don't know. This is, like, on the absolute borderline of I would call this meta. Like, it's only meta if you really want to do trading, but, like, it's a fun... Like, tying up sibs that fast is really fun. It's, it's really, really fun. Manipulate is... Oh, God. Okay. I, I don't know. Unfun. 
I'm gonna say unfun. It just, it's just, okay, you get an extra resource. Like, I feel like most of the manipulator skills are probably gonna go somewhere into there. Overbearing is better and fun. I'll, I'll say that. Being able to move free saves, that's cool. That's a cool skill. Silver Tongue. Silver Tongue falls into the same category as well. It's a fine skill. Like, there need to be some skills like that, I think. But also, it's just not an interesting concept. And it's just, okay, you get an extra resource. And it counts, I guess, twice for Master Trader and stuff like that. Like, uh, Negotiator. Oh, Master Trader. I don't know if I'd say this is fun or not. Because there is definitely a fun aspect to being like, oh, I come out of custody in 10 seconds instead of 90. I don't know if I'd say it's unfun, though. I think the effect it has on the game when you're not expecting it and then you're suddenly like, oh, Master Trader. Oh, I'm out and like instantly is really fun. I'm gonna say fun for that. I don't know, that's maybe maybe I'll change my mind on it. But actually no, no, in the current state of the game, no, you're right. In the current state of the game, it isn't actually meta because you just don't go into custody at all, ever. And if you do go into custody, then you probably have civs anyway, so you can just trade if like the timer is still long. Yeah, with all of the like adaptive armor stuff and fortitude stuff and all this other stuff that have changed, custody in general is just kind of much less of a thing than it used to be. Negotiator. This is the same as the other tra trading skills. It's just, okay, great, you get extra resources. It's not that it's, it's not that trading is boring by itself, it's that the skills that in that improve trading are just kind of, they're not interesting skills is the, is the thing. It's just you put a skill point in, okay, great, I get an extra resource now. That's cool, I guess. Menacing. Personally, like, I don't know if I find it fun. I think it's definitely interesting. It's an interesting skill. Could it have been base game? Could it have just been a thing that you have without spending skill points? Yes. It's, it's, just, it's a good skill, though. I think that might be one of the only, like, manipulator ones that are actually, like, feel like you're doing something instead of getting extra stuff for training. And Stockholm, I guess. Okay, does Stockholm work or not? Because from what I've been hearing, Stockholm will randomly not work. <laughs> I was under the assumption Stockholm worked. If it works all the time, then it's a good skill. If it doesn't work all the time, it's situational. Uh, Stockholm is, uh, when a sieve is down, you can shout at them. I'm oh, sorry, when you're down, you can shout at a sieve and they will revive you. And that also works with SWAT that you've menacing as well. So if you shout at a SWAT and get, turn them into a sieve, you can then use Stockholm on them if you go down next to them. Or if you go down, you can stop, you can menacing like a SWAT while you're down and then Stockholm them, which is kind of cool. It's kind of a cool synergy, but apparently it doesn't work half the fucking time, so... If it still doesn't work all the time, then it's just situationally good. If it does work all the time, then I'll put it into meta fun, probably. Uh, transporter... 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 Whenever you pick up back a body again or refresh rush... Uh, this is honestly such a nothing skill. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm just misunderstanding, but like, I used to think this was a really cool skill at first, and now it's just kind of, uh, like... I don't care. Like, I don't use it for Roche. I just use it because I have transporter skills. That's it. If I had the choice to not take this skill, I wouldn't. There are t like, you can kind of make it work if you want Roche or if you want to use it to activate Roche skills, but also, yeah, it's just kind of bad. Also, it fucking, like, is an anti-synergy with, uh, Code Blue as well. Because, like, if you're, like, moving bags and then someone goes down and you, like, want to revive them, it's like, oh, but I hope you didn't accidentally drop a bag because you don't have Roche anymore. <laughs> Like, okay. It's a really weird skill. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not really a huge fan of it. Same goes for thingy as well, transport ace. It's the same thing, but you get grit. Sure, losing rush randomly is annoying enough. Why would I want to just randomly lose grit? In theory, you could use this for infinite grit. If you, like, bring a zipline bag and then don't set up the zipline and just carry the zipline around all heist. Maybe I do need to add a category for skills that are, like, just why? Because I, I don't... I don't like either of these. Catapult. Okay, no, catapult is strong, but overlooked. Catapult is like, unironically, it should be meta. The thing is that you don't really need it. You can absolutely play the game about it. It's just, it's a fun to skill. I think it should be meta, but I think most people would probably disagree with that. It's, it's a really good skill though. Like, it does have situations where it's like really, really good. You can minimize like the amount of bag throwing that you do with it. It's really strong in that sense. I don't know if I'd necessarily say it's meta. Oh, that's a piece of burden, isn't it? Oh no, that's just meta and fun. That's just like, I don't know, like, it's fun being able to run around at full speed, but also, like, why? Why is this a skill? <laughs> like, unironically, why is this a skill? Okay, cool, so I can, I can spend a skill point to just not have movement speed penalties ever. Okay. The thing is, I think if we had power lifter without Beast of Burn, Beast of Burn would be more interesting, uh, power lifter would be more interesting skill. But because Beast of Burn exists, power lifter is just, it's just, okay, cool, you can carry two bags now. There is, like, nothing to think about in that sense, it's just, here, spend three skill points. Now you have two bags. Woo! 
carry. Uh, brutal carry, my beloved. No, that is so questionably useful. Uh, as long as you have grit while carrying a bot. Maybe I do need to add a category for- oh my god. I'm just gonna call this why. Like, why? <laughs> why do these skills exist? Who made them? Like, at least with like some of these other ones, it's like, okay, I can kind of see why they might exist, but like, okay, but this is just like, okay, you carry a bag, people are scared. Oh, sorry, it's a body. While well, carrying a body. Like, 90% of the time, you don't want civs to be intimidated instantly anyway. Because if they're intimidated, everyone can see them instantly. Most of the time, it's better to let them stand there for a few seconds while you deal with something else. You don't want this. You never want this. <laughs> this is just a bad skill. Deep pockets. Uh, this is just better and fun. Resource duplication, because why not? Powerlifter. Again, I, I, I feel like Powerlifter actually falls more into the fun category, but I feel like this necessarily shouldn't have been a skill. I feel like this could have just been a base thing. Like, you can just carry two bags, but you move slower. Maybe I'm I'm cuckoo for thinking that, but like, I, I've always thought that since they announced it. Powerlifter is kind of fun. It's just, again, because of fucking Beast of Burden, there's like no penalty to using it. I think it would be a more interesting skill if Beast of Burden didn't exist. It forced you to actually decide, do I carry two bags and move slower, or do I carry one bag and move at a normal speed? There's no decision to make because Beast of Burden. Unless you just choose not to take Beast of Burden, which I guess then is the decision. Do you take Beast of Burden or not? But like, it's such a good skill, you, there's no reason not to. I think some of these skills need to be like reworked or like moved around or like made just base. Strategist? Strategist. For me, these two skills fall into why. Like, I personally do not understand why you would want these skills. Personally, I do not understand it. I'll put them into questionably useful then, but personally, I don't understand why you would ever want these skills. I don't know. I, I, I guess if you want to see outlines through walls, they can have a use. Uh, combat marking. Combat marking is... that's not combat marking, that's marked for death. What's that do again? Whenever we're down disabled, Enemy, that enemy was five when five meters are maxed. I'm gonna say situationally, if you get hit by a cloaker then it'll mark them and you can use thingy for assessment to to reduce the damage you take. Yeah, I would say these two are... Because against certain enemies... Yeah, against like doses and shields they are good. And if you're running a build that facilitates marking SWAT, then you can get the bonuses on general spot as well. Misdirect. The problem is we don't know when it works because there is no indicator that you've dodged a bullet. So you just don't get shot and you have no idea if it's because misdirects worked. Like it's impossible to tell if it's if it's actually doing anything is the problem. Uh what's the next one? So you can see I might put these in the strong. I don't know. With Groundskeeper, you can get the grit from CQC Ace, like, without too much of a hassle. I might say strong. I might say they're strong. I might. Oh, cover-up is a Y skill. Yeah, no. <laughs> the times where I've been like, oh man, if only I had cover-up are so few and far between. It's only when I have two loud guns with no throwing knife, and that's it. Like, if I have two loud guns and no throwing knife and we're stealthing, oh man, I, I wish I had cover up. It's also good for speedrunning. I mean, maybe if you have groundskeeper as well, then it's like two seconds to choke the guy out and answer his pager. I guess. I guess. Groundskeeper cover up, maybe that's the bad. Is that faster than what you call it? Is it Grifter? Grifter, open mic. Is that faster? I don't know. I don't think anyone's ever timed it. Okay, soft assets is just flash a guy, grab him, throw him, armor. There's like thought behind it. There's like intent behind it. Yeah. Yeah, I would probably say it leans more towards fun than unfun. It feels a little bit brain dead to me that it's just kind of like flash, grab, throw, but also like that's a process that you have to go through. And also you like, there's still that risk of like, if you get take too much damage, you can't replenish the the plate because it doesn't like invalidate like any game mechanics or anything it's just kind of a way of gaining armor back that you otherwise wouldn't have groundskeeper groundskeeper situationally good <laughs> it's not it's not insane it's not a crazy skill but yeah if you want to choke people out you can do it faster now okay hidden puller i'm gonna say strong but overlooked i think it's not a bad skill it really isn't a bad skill though that's the thing i don't think it's it's something that people have caught onto yet you can have flashes for soft assets you can do stuff for soft assets and then if you want a smoke oh hey we have a smoke now. Especially because of how strong smokes are, it's really, really strong. It's just, you need to like the playstyle of flashing people and throwing them, I guess. No, Savage Takedown, which doesn't require you to take anyone down anymore. Why is it still called Savage Takedown? Whenever you grab a human shield, let it see or employ you by me as this becomes intimidated. Okay, I feel like this isn't as Y of a skill as Brutal Carry. Like, if you're moving someone and... Wait, hold on, let me just double check that. 
who sees you. Okay. Is that... Okay, I feel like if you're moving a sieve and people have already seen you, you're probably already being detected anyway. So in that sense, them being intimidated doesn't matter at all because they're already alerted. People are already being alerted. It doesn't make any difference if you intimidate them. So you don't have to shower them. They just instantly get on the floor. Like, I guess that's fine. I don't even need to, I, I don't need to say anything. We're all in agreement, right? Okay, Grifter. Is that meta fun or meta un, meta un fun though? There's no real thought behind it. I enjoy, I enjoy Grifter quite a lot. And then Grifter Ace is, I feel like that's bad. <laughs> I feel like that's really bad actually. Uh, that seems like a Y skill. Hold on. Is that just if someone is seeing you before you ask on, they instantly get into it. That's really bad. That seems actively detrimental. I guess I can check actually, right? Yeah, no, it just insta alerts people. That's terrible. Holy shit. Okay, no, that's really bad. <laughs> Next one, Supreme. It's situationally good. I just don't see a point, but like there are cases where if you get cuffed and you nobody else can reach you, then it's fine. If you want to do rock the cradle speed runs and you want to do the route where you get cuffed, then yes, it's fine. That's walk the walk. I think that's fun. I don't know. M maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think that's fun. Uh, social engineering. I think all of the grifter ones are honestly just fun. Like, now that I think about it. Like, they, they give you so much more, like, flexibility and versatility in terms of what you can do in stealth that it just kind of makes the game quite a bit more fun in terms of self. Actually, it is open mic. There are use, there are times where it's useful, I guess, like, if you're, answer, like, answering a page under a camera that's rotating or something. It's situational. I would say that one's probably more situational than the others. Uh, situationally good. Cool. I need to think about this. Uh, <laughs> hacker basic is kind of, like, the other hacker skills wouldn't work without hacker to begin with. Like, you need to access cameras to use any of the stuff. So in that sense, I would say meta fun, I guess. Accessing cameras is fun. So, like, a unique new mechanic that you gain access to. Uh, hacker ace, I'm gonna say strong but overlooked. People sleep on the camera detonation. It can be really good if the map that you're playing doesn't have titan cams. <laughs> it entirely depends on the fucking security modifiers. Detonating the cameras can be really good in loud. Uh, secure, I, I don't know how to decide on secure loot because secure loot, I feel like it's meta just objectively. I'm gonna say fun actually. Like there are there are times where you can do like clutch saves and stuff with securely by like looping a cam at the right time, and that's kind of fun. Appliance breach is situationally good. People might disagree, but there are situations where you can use appliance breach. There are, they are lessened as of this update because they broke fucking doors, so sound propagation doesn't work properly anymore. But there are situations where appliance breach is kind of okay. Touch the sky, you can use it to loop, uh, to like hack the radio to get the dog out of the way from a distance so you don't need to be next to it. There are situations where it's useful, but it's like there's so few and far between. Lures in general are kind of so situationally useful that like lures and appliance breach are so close to almost actually being good, but it feels like they're just missing something and I don't know what it is. I want to believe in I want to believe in laws and appliance breach. I can't bring myself to believe in them strong enough to say they're overlooked. That they're, they're really not. They're very, very situationally good. Like just on the borderline of being situationally good. Routed ping. I might say overlooked, but I don't know. People don't generally use Road Ping. But in combination with the like marking enemy skills, it can be really good. I don't know if I'd say that it's meta. I I don't think it would ever become meta. Uh, signal catch. I feel like this is questionably useful. I don't know. I, I, maybe situationally, if you kill two guards that are like a distance away from each other, you can answer them both. Whereas you wouldn't be able, you wouldn't have time to reach them normally. It's just you can answer pages from a distance, but it's like five or ten meters or something. It's a really short distance. <laughs> I think this is similar to Appliance Breach. It's so situational, but like the one percent of the time where it's like, oh, I could really answer two pages right now that are like slightly too far away to reach within a normal like time span is like, it happens just enough. It kind of comes up, but not really. If you play a lot of stealth, it comes up eventually. But if you, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, Glitch Protocol. Oh, Glitch Protocol is just meta. 
I feel like that falls more into unfun though. I don't know. Because it's basically just, oh, I got caught. I guess I'm just gonna... Actually, is it unfun? Because some, some of the like escort routes are so long that instantly getting out of the escort is more fun than having to wait like five minutes. It's basically just, I got caught, oh well, I guess I'll press this button and now I am I can keep playing. I feel like this is like in between the two somewhere, but it's more unfun than fun. Oh, that's the old Mr. X. Okay, I'll, I'll leave that one out then, but I, I feel like old Mr. X would have been somewhere around here. Strong but overlooked or situationally good. Infiltrator, um, easily like meta stealth skill, right? I feel like it's fun as well. Kind of. Yeah, no, picking locks like instantly because of it is is kind of fun. That and because of the loose cash still, uh the loose cash uh loose cash stuff. It lets you do some fun micromanagement. I know that that's a an idea that is insane to some people. It lets you do some fun micromanagement with bagger as well. So like pick up bags quickly. Infiltrist I think falls into the same category as well. It lets you like play more aggressively in stealth without needing to like gain rush in some kind of dumb way or like slowly pick a lock. You can just get spotted by a guard for half a second and then go pick a lock. Uh, quick fingers, that is probably a safe one because picking some locks is agonizing. And the last time I spent picking locks there. <laughs> Retriever, I'm not sure. I feel like Retriever is, if you're using throwing knives, maybe meh? But I don't know, there, there aren't that many people that I'm aware of that play exclusively throwing knife with throwing knife skills. Maybe strong but overlooked. Solely for the reason that most people don't use throwing knives in loud to begin with. Like if throwing knives were, were more of a prevalent throwable in loud, then I feel like this would maybe be meta, but because throwing knives are so like uncommon in general, I, I really don't think it can be considered like super meta. Wait, that was Blade Bouncer. Wait, then there's Blade Bouncer. Oh no, Blade Bouncer should be meta fun. Wait. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, no, Retriever should be strong but overlooked. Blade, Blade Bounce is a fun skill. Uh, Bagger. I think this is better fun. Actually, no, no, it's not. Am I gonna do it? Am I gonna put it in what? I, I, I just went from better fun all the way to the opposite end, actually. Hold on. That's the problem. Yeah. It it only works when you bag something the first time. That's the thing, though. If you bagged something, you're not gonna bag it again. So it's either, like, it's only good for the situation where you're bagging something. And if, I guess if you're being shot or something, or, like, if you're about to be detected, then I guess maybe it might help. But there, there are, like, no situations in the game currently where that happens. <laughs> just kill them? Crouch? Stop being detected? I guess it's situationally... Uh, just because I guess on our, like, branch bank runs, I guess it would maybe help in the vault sometimes if we could bag the money slightly faster. It's a speedrun skill as well, yeah. It's it's so situational. And a throw throw is good. Literally just you throw something, you get a chance to get it back instantly. I mean, it's kind of fun, I guess, but also like, I think frugal throw it, the thing with frugal throw it is that it's basically just scrounger, but for when you throw something. So in that sense, it's like, it's not really different from, I'm still kind of hung up on this. I don't know where to put. I guess, I guess, yeah, because there isn't really like any involvement in your part. It's just throw the thing and you maybe get it back. Yeah, I'm gonna put that in them. Clean Slate. Oh uh, god. Here's the thing, I really like Clean Slate. I think Clean Slate should just be like a base feature. I understand why people don't like it. Yeah, I, I really like Clean Slate in combination with Wanchung builds. It eases some of the like burden of using uh, armor bags. I might just put that in them. Scrambler. No, Scrambler basic fucks. No, yeah, no, Scrambler basic fucks. And I think after they... It's not meta right now, but I think after they introduce the techie, it might become meta. You can make combat drones fight for you. That kind of fucks a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, when I play Soul Game Rush, uh, I feel like that can be really strong in some builds. KSC. No, KSC. Yeah, no, that's really good for KSC. The thing is, in combination with KSC specifically, I think it's maybe really good. But that's with KSC, so that is more situ- Yeah, okay, no, that's more situational, yeah. You need KSC for it to work. Uh, speed hack, as long as you have Rush Wall and ECM Gemma is active, Okay, this is actually a pretty good skill. I've never used it, but it's a pretty good skill. I'm gonna say that's maybe overlooked. Like, unironically, that might be overlooked a little bit. Uh, single scan. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't, I can't say it's strong. I can't. I want, to, I want to, but it's not that good. It's only, like, good in certain situations. The techie is active. If you don't know where the FBI van is, if you want to like destroy the FBI van through a wall with the red fox, I guess. I want to say it's good, but it just isn't that great. If it maxed specials, that would be really good. What if it maxed every enemy? That would go hard. Maybe that would be too many red outlines, but that would kind of go hard. <laughs> Extra pockets. That feels to me like a just a 
a man from the skill, but I don't think people even use this for like tools even. Like I don't think anyone really uses a skill anyway. Actually, I guess in mm, actually I guess in self with conversation specifically, that is like the only time I can think of people using it. But it's like cool, great, I get extra ECM. In loud, it's kind of pointless. In self, it's I would probably say meta a little, but uh, it's not an interesting skill. It's just an extra ECM. That's it. ASC. I think it depends on the weapon. Me putting this in situationally good. Okay, here's the thing. Me putting this in situationally good isn't because I think it's weak. I think it's actually strong but overlooked, but it depends on the weapon. It really depends on the weapon you're using. If you're using a weapon that takes more than one shot to kill, it's quite good. It's really good. But if you're using a weapon that is one shot to kill or like two shots to kill, it really doesn't matter that much. I don't know. I feel like it's more situational than it is strong. But when it is useful, it's really, really good. Like, if you have a build where KSC applies, it's it's easily, like, meta fun. But if you're not using a build where, like, KSC applies that much, it's just kind of situational. It's not something that you can just put into any build and just have it just work. Canvas yeah, that's just... I'm gonna say meta fun. I feel like that that's kind of like secure loop. And for me, it is secure loop because I can't use secure loop. For me, this is secure loop, okay? It's fun, goddammit. I like putting cam I like putting ECMs next to cameras and watching them turn off. It's so much fun. Easily a better skill. Easily one of the most fun self skills in the game. Which is crazy because all it is is placing an ECM. Uh, full recall. I feel like full recall conceptually is just unfun. But with cam distortion it is fun. Like in the builds where it's useful it's fun. In the builds where it works it's fun. It's literally my version of fucking ECM feedback. Okay I can't use- I'm not ECM feedback. Uh, Secure loop. I can't use secure loop. I literally- it doesn't work for me. <laughs> because like, if I try and secure loop a camera, I just exit the camera. I can't use secure loop. Even if I want to, I can't use secure loop. So this is my only way to use secure loop. Let me have this. Uh, what's this one? Is that Fortitude? Yes. Yes, that's unyielding. Okay, right. I'm gonna rustle some feathers with this and I'm gonna do it intentionally. Um, but first of all, Fortitude Basic. I can't even call this strong, but it's just more health. I don't know, it's, it's kind of fun having more health, but also it's just more health. That's a good point, yeah. I can agree with that, actually. Most people get it because they want to get the other Fortitude skills, but by itself, the 50 health is really, really good. I can agree with that, then, actually. Yeah, it's, it's kind of overlooked. Ace, I don't think, is actually here. Yeah, it doesn't look like Fortitude Ace is here, but if it was, it would probably be somewhere in Trung, but... I don't know if strong but overlooked or meta. Be somewhere up here easily, because the extra downtime is really good. Um, it helps a lot. Like there are a lot of situations where the extra 15 seconds, like 15 seconds, like really does matter. Um, the extra down doesn't matter too much, but it can also help, like just by itself. But because of like the current uh, like medic bag like meta, it's maybe less important because you'll have so many med bag charges to begin with that you don't necessarily need. The extra down, but whatever. Health siphon. Do I do I do it? Do I dare to say this is overlooked? It works with last man standing. It does. If someone uses a med bag after your last man standing has been used, it resets last man standing. I feel like a lot of people just see it as like, oh, 40%, that's not really that much healing, but it's really strong because you can use it for some kind of like remote healing strats as well. The person who placed the med bag goes and like runs through the map to do something and then you just keep eating the med bag to like keep them alive. It's really, really good. It's a really good skill. Unyielding. This is just meta. Like, this is just straight meta. Like, I... I don't know which category I'd put it in. Maybe meta fun because of, like, the down mechanic part of it. I think unyielding is just objectively one of the strongest skills in the game. The extra health you get is fucking nuts. Like, actually insane. The thing about unyielding is that it's not just strong for the health, it's also strong because it effectively increases your adrenaline gain and it increases your adrenaline cap. You can just take it for extra health and it's strong. You can take it for extra adrenaline gain and it's strong. Or you can take it for extra adrenaline cap, like extra max adrenaline and it's strong. It's just a really good skill. Like regardless of what you want from it, it does so many things at once. I would maybe say this is like one of the most overtuned skills of the game in terms of how much it does for one point. And this is where I'm going to rustle some feathers because I'm going to do this to Supra. 
Now, I need to explain this a little bit. Super isn't a bad skill. In combination with all the fortitude skills and like healing skills, super is really good. But I think super at its core represents a problem with fortitude's design. Super literally only exists as something that you put a point in to get the most out of adrenaline, that's it. Because everything that super does, unyielding also does but better. Super by itself is the worst skill in Fortitude. It does basically fucking nothing. But if you combine it with the other skills, then it's good. It's literally a skill that exists as a point filler. That is it. <laughs> it's literally just there so you have to spend more points. It's such a badly designed skill. If you run the Super by itself, I hate you. That's not a joke. If you run Super by itself, what the fuck are you doing? It's such a bad skill. Like, unironically, by itself, it is worse than Unyielding. Unyielding literally does the same thing but better. It's just the better version of Super. This is what I mean by Unyielding does too much. It's a bigger green bar, but it's not! It's I don't know what the next skill is. Walking tall. <laughs> okay, we got to walking tall! We spent like 20 minutes looking at Super. Is this gonna be the thing that Super is good? Am I, am, I, am I gonna be haunted by people saying Super is good even though I never I never said that it was necessarily bad, I just said it was bad by itself. Yeah, I'm gonna double down, Super sucks. It's the worst skill in the game. Walking tall. This is just a better skill, I think. For adrenaline, this is just a better skill. Uh, I'm actually not sure if it, this, this is actually that strong now that I think about it. The like, default drain time is already like so slow that you don't necessarily need it. I'll, I'll just put it in fun because it I mean, sure, it's fun to have, like, no adrenaline drain, right? Pena Symbolia. Okay. If you're making an adrenaline build, this is basically required. Yeah, because it just extends the life of adrenaline by a huge amount. I would genuinely say it's unfun just because it's, like, put a skill point into it. And it's just, okay, my adrenaline can, like, take more than two shots. You can use it with the 800, with the 880, and kill people in one shot. Stockpile. Sick. Pop up medic, uh, not pop up medic, uh, medic, 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 medic. Okay, your red crewmate's turning some faster. This is, this is a fun skill. I like this skill. This is uh, just 20%. The real fast part comes from what you call it, uh, Code Blue. Speaking of Code Blue, uh, uh, I'm gonna put that there as well. <laughs> I like the fast revives. I don't know if they're necessarily meta. They should be meta. If they're not meta, they should be fucking meta. Everybody should have these skills. They're really good. Medicus uh, is also really good just for the extra like 40% damage reduction. Because it's basically just half damage when you revive someone, which is pretty good. I thought that was in combat medic, to be honest. I forget combat medic is just the immunity. Which, to be fair, also meta and fun. Maybe it shouldn't be in fun, maybe it should be in unfun, but I think it's kind of fun. I think being able to get in there, revive someone, and then get out relatively safe is pretty fun. Field surgery? Field surgery. The one I threw down is fine. It's just now that we have downs back from using medbag space, I feel like it's a lot less needed. I don't know if I'd say it's meta. No. If this was like release build of the game, then yeah, it would be meta because of fucking doses dropping first aid kits. I think it's more just situational now. Like it basically, like it's only really useful if you go down twice. Increases efficiency with med bags, I guess. In the current state of the game, you don't, I mean, you do go down a bit, I guess, but yeah, I don't, know. I don't feel like it's that like that strong of a skill anymore. Quick fix, not quick fix, steady hands. Oh my god, quick fix is fucking pity too. Uh, steady hands, not quick fix. Steady hands. The extra 5% is like so marginal. The fortitude builds is good. It's not really overlooked. I don't really know how I feel about this as a skill as the thing. This is just a weird one. Yeah, there isn't really like anything that stands out to me about steady hands as like a super fun skill. It's just kind of, okay, I get my health, cool. Like even when I'm in a lobby with someone who has steady hands and I don't know they have steady hands and then I use a med bag and it's like, oh, I just got 75% health instead of 50%. Okay, it doesn't really like surprise me in a good way. It's just kind of like, oh, I have more health than I thought I would get. Okay, cool, I guess. Yeah, triage is the same kind of problem where it's just like, okay, cool. You just like trigger all your buffs and then you just get extra health. They both kind of do the same thing and have the same purpose though, just kind of being cool, he has extra health. That's fine as like a skill, but it's like also just not super exciting. Extra charge, Marathon. Uh, escapists. I feel like it might actually be overlooked. 
I was gonna say situationally useful, but honestly, I activate escapist basic a shit ton without intending to. Like, there are a lot of times where I will accidentally gain rush by just running three seconds. It activates a lot more than you think it does. Available rush is consuming a slide and you gain a refresh edge. Oh, this is the Y skill, I think. Yeah, no, this is this is a Y skill. Like, I, I don't know why I would want to gain edge in this way when I have so many other ways of gaining edge. When you slide. Yeah, no, I don't want to consume rush when I slide. That's maybe questionable useful. Maybe you can make a build around it, but like, holy shit, that doesn't sound fun to me at all. Balanced. I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say something. I haven't used this skill, but I think it may be strong and overlooked. Maybe. The rush is consumed. You can get rush from Escape is Basic. You can get rush from fucking Scrambler Ace. You can get rush in a decent amount of ways. And this is basically the only way of negating stagger now, except for solid. And solid requires both edge and grit. And on, depending on the build that you have, you might not necessarily have edge and grit together. Or maybe you don't even want solid. I think balanced is kind of an okay compromise. Move and cover. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Move and cover is absolutely fucking overlooked. I love move and cover so much. If you have edge, if you have a way of gaining edge, you can just mantle something, gain grit. Make a gunslinger build, get move and cover, mantle something, change weapon. You have them both. It's completely free. No resource costs. It refreshes edge, or refreshes grit rather. Um, so no resource cost, so you don't need to like throw a grenade or shoot a bullet and reload, you don't need to do anything like that. The only thing you need to do is manal. It is so free. <laughs> Playing this skill makes you so much more aware of the map layout because you start looking for places that you can manal everywhere. It's a really fun skill. I really like moving colour. It's really good. Slide tackle, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. Not necessarily the best skill in the game, but it's it's quite strong. You can slide into people and stagger them. There aren't that many sources of heavy stagger in the game that are like consistent and slide tackle all you need is grit and with move and cover you can get grit for free <laughs> so you can basically always have grit whatever you want does it apply to specials non-special enemies okay that maybe makes it a little bit more situational actually but it's still kind of fun i'm gonna move it down a bit yeah if you could slide into shields it would be really good because it only works on non-specials that kind of sucks a little bit battering ram uh my beloved you're only situationally good i love you so much but it's only useful if a map has doors you can sprint through that's it and they and even then you can shoot most of those doors anyway the only map where i would say it's strong and overlooked is under the surface you can sprint through every single door on under the surface like all the like lockpick doors. It's really really good on, on, under the surface. But on any other map you can just kind of shoot the doors and there aren't that many doors on other maps anywhere. Oh 99 boxes yeah because they broke the doors in the containers. Yeah you can sprint through the doors on 99 boxes now inside the containers. There are places where you can use it but it's not that common. Maybe in Boys in Blue they'll have more locked doors and then I can sprint through all of them and I'll have a fun time but we'll see. Swift. Swift. Swift is good. Swift is really good. <laughs> I maybe even put that in meta fun, but the Swift is really good. I don't know like how meta people consider Swift. The speed increase is really noticeable. I don't know, hold on, let me just have a quick look. What does Noli say? Hold on. The Builder Master himself, he doesn't even have escapist. On short distances it's pretty small, but the thing is like you really do feel it. Like I, I've changed my mind on it. I used to think Swift was kind of like, uh, but the time difference is really small, but it just feels good. And if you're running like around the whole map, it does event it does add up over time so maybe it should be more situationally good in that case but i feel like people may be sleeping a bit on swift so i'm gonna put it there uh sharpshooter oh god i haven't used sharpshooter in so fucking long matter and fun matter and fun matter and fun matter and fun standing still for 1.5 seconds isn't fun but luckily there are other sources of edge that don't require you to do that but if you want to min max your edge gain you'll probably just take this and cutting shot or maybe precision shot if you're using the fucking SA or an 100. I think Shapshooter basic is just not super fun to use. Um, Shapshooter is, is fine. Uh, I mean, I guess it's fun, like, if you don't want to micromanage your edge buffs, I guess. If you just want to keep clicking on heads while aiming down sights. Collateral control. I feel like this is overlooked. Unironically, I think this may be overlooked a little bit. It's kind of a good skill. It's really, really good, in fact. You can't, like, stun yourself. If you're using KSC or something, you can just shoot the battery and not give a shit. You can, like, shoot naders in the body and, like, not worry about accidentally stunning yourself. You can shoot fire extinguishers and not kill saves. Uh, long shot, meta and fun. Just instantly. It's just meta and fun, I think. I don't know. Like, it's, it's basically just you do more damage at range and it's like, okay. And you have to be ADS to use it. 
so it doesn't even work on hipfire builds. And hipfire builds have no like equivalent skill. So if you want to shoot people at range and do max damage, you need to ADS and use a skill. I don't need to say anything, do I? I, I don't need to... No, I don't need to say anything. I don't need to say anything. Okay, speed aim, because I think it's quite good on certain weapons in certain situa- Okay, that's situationally good. There are builds and there are weapons where it's really, really good. I'm, I'm pretty sure it makes a pretty big difference on the R900. If you go max aim, like, if you go max ADS speed on the R900, speed aim does make a difference for that. For most weapons, it kind of is, like, pretty marginal. It really depends on the weapon, how you, like, what you've got on the weapon, the build. Engineer. I'm gonna say the... I, I feel like all of the engineer skills could reasonably be considered meta. If you want to, like, make sentries good like they're all just really good like is there a single one that's kind of like bad necessarily targeted fire is kind of questionable maybe that's kind of it maybe a peter is meta unfun it's just a random skill point that you're forced to spend to make sentries good that's kind of it i really like detonation i think detonation's a really cool skill i just hate that it killed sims that's it but yeah like if you want sentries to work all you really need is a peter and for that i'm just gonna say it's unfun because it's just like a mandatory skill point but yeah detonation is like a really fun skill is it matter? I don't know. I feel like if you're building sentries, basically all of the sentry skills could become sort of meta though, because they're meta for sentries. It's just a matter of like, how many points are you willing to spend to spend on sentries is kind of the thing. Maybe detonation is more overlooked than it should be, I don't know. Target fire, that's absolutely situational though. Cooling system is just objectively a, just a good skill as well. But I feel like that falls more into unfun because it's basically just you get the the sentry lasts longer now. You get the skill, the sentry lasts longer. Uh, same as engineer basic and ace as well. They're kind of the same thing. It's just kind of, you get the skill, the sentry lasts longer now. Spin cycle, again, kind of Fun, fun. It's kind of like just another point that you're spending to make sentries do something. It feels like they maybe should be able to do anyway. I don't know. Like there are certain sentry setups where you can't place them facing the right direction. In those cases, spin cycle is kind of required, and it's like okay, cool. Gunslinger. Gunslinger's fun. I really like gunslinger. Yeah, no, this is just meta fun. Like if you're making a hip fire build, then it's meta. And it's really fun. I really like changing weapons again, Edge. Ace is, I guess, the same kind of thing. Where the same kind of thing as sharpshooter, where it's like. If you don't want to micromanage your edge, then I guess you can just take this and have fun shooting people. Personally, I don't care about that, but from the hip. <sighs> yeah, no. Uh, I feel like I'm basically forced to take from the hip just to make certain weapons feel good to use. Isn't a particularly fun skill. It's basically just a stat increase and that's it. Heavy hip, okay. Heavy hip fire is heat. He overlooked. Holy shit. We have overlooked heavy hip fire so badly. It's not even fucking funny. A heavy hip fire is maybe one of the strongest skills in the game. And it is so much fun to use. I don't need to say anything because we have a video of this. A heavy hip fire, if you melee someone, they get heavy staggered. And you can chain this. You can just melee them forever. <laughs> It ignores the melee cooldown. That isn't the crazy part. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? You can melee shields and it heavy staggers them. Heavy hip fire is fucking nuts. It's one of the best skills in the game. Why the fuck does it work like this? <laughs> so yeah, heavy hip fire. People are sleeping on it. We only found out about this like a few days ago. Legitimately paid a two shock at all. That's what it is, yeah. Yeah, heavy hip fire is just fucking nuts. Like if you, like just in general, the heavy stagger is crazy. Because against snipers as well, like if, if you try and shoot a sniper and you don't kill them in one shot, the sniper will stagger, so they stop aiming. So you can just shoot a sniper once, you don't even have to kill them, they'll stop aiming at you for like a few seconds. It's fucking crazy, it's such a good skill. For just one point and all, like the only limit is you can't ADS. Easily like top one skill, like it's fucking insanely strong. Like this should be better, if it's like, it should be better, it just should be better, like I don't know. Finisher, I am a big finisher enjoyer. Like my builds for the last few months have been entirely based around using finisher. I have compact mags on every we- I mean, I don't have that many weapons, but I have compact mags on every weapon <laughs> for the explicit purpose of using finisher. It's not super strong. The, the problem with finisher is, okay, first of all, cutting shot, yes. Cutting shot, like, makes finisher kind of relevant. But the other problem is, even if cutting shot didn't exist, finisher just doesn't do enough. There is one weapon that I've used where I've noticed it does something, 
which is the bison, if you get to the last shot on the bison, you can body shot swap. That is the only time that I've noticed finisher changing the shots to kill on, a, on any enemy. Every other weapon is maybe one less shot to kill, but you have to reload after anyway, so who gives a shit? There is one situation in which finisher is very useful. If you have compact mags, you can kill dozers very fast. That is it. The thing is though, it comes up a lot because like basically any- no, no, hold on, there's another situation with all of dozers that I'll get into in a minute. There are a couple of situations with dozers where it's really good. The main- the main thing is if you have like the AK with compact mag, uh, you can fire a full magazine of the compact mag into the dozer visor, uh, swap to your secondary and then that will break the visor. So you can break it like just in one mag and then- basically what I'm trying to say is finisher makes compact mags playable. That's what I'm trying to say. Finisher lets you play the game with compact mags and still kind of have fun. There is one use for finisher. If you have one bullet in the red fox, you can kill a bulldozer in one shot. It means that if someone leaves the red fox on one bullet left, you don't need to reload it to kill a dozer. You can just shoot them once and they die. It's really, really good for that specific use case. There, I found it. Okay. So as you can see, I pick up the red fox. I didn't even realise I had one bullet in it and then I killed him one shot. That is the kind of situation where it's really, really useful. That and also enabling compact mags to feel viable. So for that, I would actually put it in situationally good. It's not super strong, but it's it exists. It's fine in the kind of places where it exists and it's okay. Maybe it could do with a buff of some kind, but it's not like super bad. Wait, that was not- oh, I moved the wrong thing. This isn't the right skill. This is quick draw. A quick draw is good. Wait, no, that's quick draw. Hold on. Quick draw is just a good skill. Uh, finisher situationally good. There we go. Quick draw is really only good for like, uh, gunslinger builds where you don't have gunslinger aced is kind of the thing because you need to like swap weapons a lot. Tank basic is just meta, but it's like not fun. It's like aced. This might be heresy. I think tank case isn't that bad. I used tank case in a build before they added fortitude and it was like my main source of grit because that build was it's similar to the one that I'm using here. It was a last man standing build. If you want to remove all your other sources of grit then tank ace is basically all you need to trigger last man standing. I'm not gonna say it's good. I'm not gonna say tank ace is good at all. It's in fact very questionably useful in very specific circumstances. If you have no other sources of grit and you want to use last month's ending, 10 case is really good. Disengage. Okay. There are a lot of situations where if you had disengage, you wouldn't fail a heist. Hardy. New Hardy. Uh it's better. Is it fun? Is it unfun? I don't know. I really like Hardy in general because it's Hardy is kind of just the same thing as what you call it, right? As last one standing. It's, it's temporary damage immunity. I feel like it's kind of fun, actually, yeah. It, it gives you more like more survivability. I don't know. I'm maybe maybe I'm a little a little kooky, but that's a bag skill. I don't know which bag skill that is off the top of my head, but extra plates. Cool, right? Yeah, that's going in unfun. Cool. Armor up. I kind of fuck with armor up, I'm gonna be honest. Before they changed it, it was kind of unfun, but now it's kind of fun. It's even better anymore, actually, you know that I think about it. It's even meta. Yeah, it's like an automatic thing on adaptive anyway. And most people are running fortitude now, so they don't even use the armors where you would need it. Does that move it down to strong but overlooked? It's not better anymore, I don't think. Uh, last man sat. I don't need to say anything. I, I I have been a big, a big, big fan of Last Man Standing for a long time. <laughs> Last Man Standing is a fun skill. I like it a lot. It's an interesting skill that forces you to play around a bunch of different like game mechanics. It means that you need to play around grit, it means that you need to play around healing, it means that you need to play around being careful with damage until you reach the point where like you need to use it. There are situations where you can intentionally trigger it. Yeah, the only real problem I have personally with Last Man Standing is if you go down and you don't have grit and then you gain grit while you're down um, and someone shoots you while you're down and you have grit, it will consume last man standing despite the fact that you are already down. And then when you get back up, it doesn't reset last man standing or grit because it only resets grit when you go down. But because you were already down, when it triggered, it never gets reset, which is kind of dumb. That shouldn't be a thing. It should reset when you get back up, I think. If you go down and you kill two people with Enforcer and you gain grit, and then someone turns and shoots you, well, goodbye grit. It's just gone. <laughs> Until you heal again. So someone can help you up, but you can't get grit anymore. Also, yeah, um, like there are situations like when you're running to the escape where you can intentionally just like, okay, well, I'm going to get grit and then just fucking run for it and 
hope for the best. It works really well on Road Rage especially. You can just run down the bridge and not give a shit because it doesn't matter if you lose all your health, you're gonna get at least four seconds of invulnerability, right? And if everyone's in custody, it's 10 seconds, which is huge. That's more than enough to... It works really well with uh, movement cover, yeah. It, it really does. Like, Last Man Standing works really well for a lot of a lot of things. But I think a lot of people kind of, like, gave up on it after they nerfed it. Even though it's still really strong. Like, four seconds of, invul of invulnerability is, is quite a lot. You can get you can do a lot in four seconds. Other people might have given up on it, but not me. The only problem with Last Man Standing right now, right now, is that because of Fortitude, because of all the extra health that we have, it's pretty rare to actually lose enough health to get to the point where you go down. Like, you have so much health that you just rarely go down, so you never get to the point where it's like, oh man, I wish I had Last Man Standing, because you just don't lose enough health for that to happen in the first place. Yeah, that's the main reason why I'm not using fortitude skills right now. Because I want to use Last Man Standing more. Uh, Enforcer. Enforcer is meta fun, I think. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, it has a requirement that's kind of a lot of things, but it's not like too bad. Basically just kill people. Enforcer Ace, I would maybe say is... Do people even run Enforcer Ace? It's kind of the same thing as Enforcer Basic, but... I feel like most people have a different form of edge and they just kind of ignore this. It is good, it's really good. Like, if this was your only source of edge, it's a really good source of edge. I don't know if people consider this meta or not though. I don't know if people normally run this. Meta fun? Uh, quick reload. Do most people run quick reload even? It might be a little overlooked, but it's kind of good. If it isn't meta, I'm gonna fucking consider it meta. It's, it should be a better skill. Is that a shock and awe? I like shock and awe. Shock and awe is fucking incredible. I don't know if... I feel like people don't necessarily use Shock and Awe as much as maybe they, they could, but Shock and Awe is really fun. Especially if you're running a build like like I'm running where you... Like, it's really only useful if you don't have Ammo Funnel Replenish, right? Because if you have Ammo Funnel Replenish, you can just kill everyone. If you don't have infinite ammo and you can't just kill everyone all the time, then having that chance to stumble is really, really good. Because it basically means that you can kill someone and then if you run out of ammo, it's like, oh, well, there's... A few other people need me still, but they can't do anything for three seconds so I can just reload. This first. I don't know if I'd... Maybe I'd consider this one more unfun, actually, because the, the distance on it is really limiting. Five meters. I struggle a lot with, with having fun with this first because it, it, it's so hard to stay within that range. It's definitely meta. It's definitely a really good skill. It's just I don't find it particularly fun. Solid. I feel like Solid is kind of fun. Combat Reload. This is so unfun. I hate Combat Reload so much. I've never liked Combat Reload. I've never liked the whole reload thing of it. It's just okay. I need to refresh as your grit. I guess I'll reload. How does that matter? You know, like this is overlooked. I'm gonna be honest, shoot 35 bullets for edge really isn't that bad. It's surprisingly easy to trigger, like just by playing the playing normally. The refresh edge on empty magazines is... I don't know. Wait, yeah, Moa is the one with ammo funnel replenish. Why is this the ace skill? Like, you're never going to have an empty magazine. Okay, no, that makes it so questionably useful. What? As long as you have edge, your weapon recoil is reduced. You know where this one's going. I'm not even sure this skill does anything. <laughs> Suppressive fire. Uh, as long as you have edge, every shot for your weapon has a chance to flip heavy stagger. This is just worse heavy hit fire. So it's like situationally good, I guess. It would be kind of funny if the same like melee thing applies to suppressive fire as well. Like sometimes when you melee someone, they have a chance to stagger. That would be really funny. I hope that that's how it works. Abba funnel. Sprint loaded. Sprint loaded is a really good skill. Maybe is meta. I don't know. It should be meta. If this isn't meta, it should be fucking meta. Sprint loaded is such a good skill. It lets you do so much more than just sprint while reloading. Because if you um, reload and then you jump into a slide, normally when you hit the ground and start sliding, that cancels the reload. But with sprint loaded, it lets you keep um, reloading after you like start the slide. It never interrupts the reload at any point, which makes it super, super useful. I like Demolitionist, and then this is the last, these are the last skills, so. I feel like Demolitionist basic is more often than not detrimental, maybe, because the grenade range is so large that it often will hit you and damage you, and this just makes that more common. It's probably, it's probably, it's probably meta, to be fair. Maybe it's situationally good because of, like, the self-damage thing. Also, the thing is this also affects what you call it, shot grenades as well. It increases the range of shot grenades. I'm gonna say meta fun then. Whenever you cause an explosion, gain a refresh rush. This is for throwable builds. A way of gaining rush. That's basically meta. <laughs> it sounds like it'd be fun. It sounds like throwing a grenade and blowing up a crowd of people and getting rush would be fun. I've never liked cooker personally. The one second requirement has always felt kind of weird to me. It's definitely a good skill. It's almost definitely meta if you want grit. 
I don't think it's fun. Hold the grenade for a second and then throw it. Okay, shell shock, right. I I legitimately thought shell shock might be good at one point. Maybe buff that up to questionably useful. It's not that it's not that useful in practice. It it feels like it would be good. It sounds like it would be good. Then you use it and it basically doesn't do anything. It is kind of sad. It is kind of a sad skill. I was so excited when they said that it would apply to all enemies instead of just non-specials and then it just kind of didn't do anything against those. As long as you have rush, non-special enemies lose their armor. They're probably going to die to the explosion. Why? If you're going to hit them with an explosion, you can just kill them with the explosion. And even if it doesn't kill them with the explosion, you're going to deal so much damage to them that they will probably basically lose their armor anyway. You know, they'll have so little health left that you can just kill them with any weapon that has AP. Kind of weird. I don't know. That's just a weird skill. Uh, Black Shield. If it wasn't Grit, it might be okay. But the fact that it's Grit, which is like, there are so few sources for Grit in the game. Consuming Grit for this seems like an unfair trade. Also, the fact that it's consuming. It's maybe questionably useful in certain cases, perhaps. Overcooked. Overcooked is already done. We did overcooked earlier. Extra munitions. Yeah, it's okay. So you just get more grenades, I guess. That's fine. That's better. Yeah, we already did overcooked. It was up here. Meta fun. So that's all of the skills then. That's literally all of them. They're all done. Um, I feel like there are a lot more in strong but overlooked and situationally good than I thought there would be. I'll be honest. Like, a lot of skills in the game are very useful. Okay, do you want me to put Supra into a place where, it, where I, if I'm taking into account adrenaline overall, it would maybe be situationally good. I would probably realistically put it in me meta unfun because it is part of meta builds and it just doesn't really like uh, whatever, but I think most of the time you probably don't need it realistically. Um, but if you're if you have the choice between unyielding or super by itself, it's down here. Because unyielding is literally just super bad. We've had our we've had our we've had our fun controversy of super ranking. But there we go. The uh you can maybe disagree with some of the better skills. Like I think some people might potentially find other funnel replenish fun because like you can just shoot forever and not need to think about it. I think it takes some of the fun out of like ammo management, but you know, I think that will about do it for the stream as well, because it's been three hours, three and a half hours. This looks so much longer. Super is a skill of all time. <laughs> Thank you for joining me and uh, good night.